evidence about the common factors in psychotherapy that positively affect psychotherapy outcomes, but did not study how learning these factors enable residents to produce better psychotherapy outcomes. And then, uh, by this, uh, by in 2013, by uh, Gestellum, uh, they proposed an integrated approach for teaching psychodynamic psychotherapy to trainees in which uncovering and supporting psychotherapy are taught side by side, but did not propose a study to evaluate this approach. So, as can be gleaned from these few studies, so there are essentially no methodologically sound studies of psychotherapy training. Therefore, uh, the book um, describe um, approach to psychotherapy teaching and supervision. So, and then they based it on the the American Association of Directors of Psychiatric Training Residency Competencies for Supportive Psychotherapy. And then also the authors of, of our book believe that their approach is in keeping with the teaching of the core clinical principles of su supportive psychotherapy, which is accepted at most psychiatry, psychiatry teaching hospitals. So, um, Assessment of residents' competence in psychotherapy is an ongoing process in many residency programs. Yeah, in the main, evaluations of residents are performed by clinical supervisors during the process of psychotherapy supervision and are formally discussed with the residents one or more times a year. Many training programs in psychiatry have established traditions of intensive individual supervision of residents particularly in long-term expressive or exploratory psychotherapy. So the process of supervision may vary from one program to another, but generally involves the following. So there uh, are four parts. So first is the presentation of the case by the resident. And then second, discussion of the diagnosis, the case formulation, goals, and the treatment plan. Third is ongoing summary of sessions by the resident using an informal recall and summary approach, process notes, videotapes, or a combination of these approaches. And fourth, um, discussion of the psychotherapy process, um, including resistance, dysfunctional thinking, defenses, affect, and the therapist interventions, as well as dynamics, genetics, psychological structure, cognitive behavioral issues, and the therapeutic relationship. So included na is the transference and the counter-transference and then the therapeutic, so therapeutic alliance. So basically, um, the supervisor has um, traditionally evaluated the resident's work by noting how well the resident performs the task just listed, as well as assessing other areas such as ability to listen and to relate to the patient in an empathic manner. Uh, the evaluation process by the supervisor is ongoing, but formal evalu evaluations are generally performed once or twice a year or more. So what, uh, what is uh, the focus of assessment? So the assessment should encompass skills, skills, of, uh, skills of attitudes toward and knowledge about general psychotherapy and the more specific approach of supportive psychotherapy. So general psychotherapy skills include establishing and maintaining boundaries and therapeutic alliance, um, listening, addressing emotions, understanding, using supervision, dealing with resistance and defenses, and applying intervention techniques. So uh, this is um, the one um, that uh, they propose and in this table, um, they've identified, um, ano, they develop competencies uh, na, ano, the, the, the list of um, mga competencies that um, the resident must be competent with. So first is uh, knowledge. So the resident, so included in the knowledge will be uh, no, the resident will demonstrate knowledge that the principal objectives of supportive psychotherapy are to maintain or improve the patient's self-esteem, minimize or prevent recurrence of symptoms, 
and maximize the patient's adaptive capacities. Also included in the knowledge, uh, the resident will demonstrate understanding that the practice of supported psychotherapy is commonly used in many therapeutic encounters. Third, the resident will demonstrate knowledge that the patient-therapist relationship is of paramount importance. Fourth, the resident will demonstrate knowledge of indications and contraindications for supportive psychotherapy. And fifth, the resident will demonstrate understanding that continued education in supportive therapy is necessary for further skill development. Another focus of assessment are the skills. So under the skills, so the resident will be, will be able to establish and maintain therapeutic alliance, establish treatment goals, able to interact in a direct and non-threatening manner, able to be responsive to the patient and give feedback and advice when appropriate, uh, demonstrate the ability to understand the patient as a unique individual with, within his or her family and social social cultural community, able to determine which interventions are the best interests of the patient, and will exercise caution about basing interventions on his or her own beliefs and values able to recognize and identify affects in the patient and himself or herself, able to confront in a collaborative manner behaviors that are dangerous or damaging to the patient, able to provide reassurance to reduce symptoms, improve morale and adaptation, and prevent relapse. And then able to support, promote, and recognize the patient's ability to achieve goals that will promote his or her well-being, able to provide strategies to manage problems with affect regulation, thought disorders, and impaired reality testing, able to provide education and advice about the patient's psychiatric condition, treatment, and adaptation, while being sensitive to specific community systems of care and social cultural issues, able to demonstrate that in the care of patients with chronic disorders, Attention should be directed to adaptive skills, relationships, morale, and potential sources of anxiety or worry, and then able to assist the patient in developing skills for self-assessment and able to seek appropriate consultation and or referral for specialized treatment. And lastly, um, uh, the resident should have these um, attitudes. So the resident will be empathic, respectful, curious, open, non-judgmental, collaborative, and able to tolerate ambiguity and display confidence in the efficacy of supportive therapy. The resident will be sensitive to social cultural, socioeconomic, and educational issues that arise in the therapeutic relationship. And lastly, the resident will be open to audio taping, video taping, or direct observation of treatment sessions. So, so those are the, the focus of the assessment. Now, uh, moving on to the method of assessment. So it could be administration of written and or oral examinations that test the resident's knowledge base. The use of simulated patients reading from standardized, standardized scripts. Uh, the resident respond to a patient vignette using supportive approach. And the supervisor's evaluation of a resident performing psycho supportive psychotherapy. So a former, formal written evaluation of the resident by the supervisor should be completed at least twice a year. So the evaluation should be educative and based on the supervisory work preceding the formal evaluation. And the supervisor should provide the resident with ver verbal feedback on a regular basis. Um, super, uh, supervisor evaluations of ongoing uh, video recorded psychotherapy sessions are the best method of teaching and evaluating residents. Video recorded sessions enable the supervisor or resident evaluator to observe the conduct of psychotherapy directly 
and the more traditional method of summarizing a session or working from process notes is less likely to convey what actually occurred in a psychotherapy session, even under the best of circumstances. So the, uh, that, those are the methods. Now, what are the um, assessment instruments? So the NADPRT, Supportive, Psychoth Supportive Psychotherapy Competencies, provided the basis for the development of a rating form to be used as a measure of a resident's competence in supportive psychotherapy. So in addition, so the authors of the book modified or combined some items with other items from the supportive psychotherapy and general psychotherapy competencies. And then the evaluation form covers three areas. So knowledge, skills, and attitude. And then the rating is on a Likert scale of 0 to 5. So 0 is can say, and then the highest is 5, which is expert. So this is, ano, this is how it looks like, yung um, uh, evaluation ng ano, tool na ginagamit for supportive psychotherapy. So the advantages of this evaluation form is that it can be scored and that it also includes space for, for the supervisor's comments. The final score is calculated by dividing the number of questions scored into the total score. So an average score of three or better suggests that the resident has demonstrated competence in supportive psychotherapy. In addition, the supervisor should write some overall comments about the resident including the resident's strengths and overall performance, the resident's ability to work in and use supervision, and areas needing further work. So the supervisor should discuss the evaluation with the resident in a way that is supportive and promotes the resident's education. So that's it for um, regarding the focus, the method, and the tools in assessing uh, supportive psychotherapy. Now we go to uh, what are the um, research done um, by um, certain schools and certain organizations uh, in the use of supportive psychotherapy. So first, uh, we have these um, manager psychotherapy research project. So uh, it is a study that compared supportive and expressive psychotherapy with psychoanalysis. So, uh, Wallerstein studied the treatment, clinical course, and post-treatment follow-up of, of 42 inpatients at the Manager Foundation. And then, their findings included the following. Um, psychoanalysis produced more limited outcomes than predicted, whereas psychotherapy, including supportive psychotherapy, often achieved more than predicted. And then all the treatments became more supportive during the course of therapy. And supportive interventions accounted for more of the change in outcome. And then a study wherein they use supportive psychotherapy in patients with schizophrenia. So patients with schizophrenia were treated for two years with, their ex uh, with either exploratory insight-oriented psychotherapy three times a week or the control therapy called the reality adaptive supportive psychotherapy once a week. So results provided clear evidence of a better outcome for patients treated with supportive psychotherapy. So um, patients with schizophrenia were randomly assigned to supportive psychotherapy or and another study also for in um, Patients with schizophrenia were, were um, randomly assigned to supportive psychotherapy or family treatment. And then supportive psychotherapy consisted of uh, medication, medication case management, crisis intervention, and education about schizophrenia, whereas family treatment involved problem-solving therapy and communi communication skills training. So they found out that Patients in supportive treatment had significant um, improvement in coping style compared with patients in family therapy.
And then another study. And then another study also. Um, patients with schizophrenia were treated for two years with either exploratory. Uh, sorry, na ano na pala. Na, na same na pala ng slide. Sorry po. And then another study um, uh, where they use supportive psychotherapy in um, uh, patients with depression. So the National Institute of Mental Health Treatment of Depression Collaborative Research Program compared uh, CBT, clinical, man uh, clinical management consisting of supportive psychotherapy and placebo. Then they found that supportive psychotherapy was efficacious as CBT. And then another study by Thompson and Gallagher in 1985, they studied 30 outpatients ranging in age from 60 to 81 years. So patients were randomly assigned to a 16-week treatment with cognitive therapy, behavior treatment, or supportive psychotherapy. And then they um, showed that their improvement was similar across the three treatment conditions at termination. Another, in a randomized clinical trial involving 100 adolescents with depression, so Renaud et al. in 1998, compared cognitive, family, and supportive psychotherapies. So the investigators concluded that their findings suggest that patients with milder forms of depression may benefit from initial supportive psychotherapy. And lastly, in the study in depression, in a study comparing supportive psychotherapy and um, CBT for the treatment of depression following traumatic brain injury, a study done by Ashman in 2014, found that both forms of psychotherapy were efficacious in improving diagnosis of depression and anxiety and reducing depressive symptoms. And then they also, there's also a study uh, that use um, su uh, supportive psychotherapy in patients with anxiety disorders. So systematic hierarchical desensitization was compared with supportive psychotherapy in a 26-week treatment trial involving patients with various types of phobias. And then they found that both treatments performed well and no difference was found between the two approaches. And then another study uh, patients with phobias and panic attacks receive either imipramine plus behavior therapy or imipramine plus um, supportive psychotherapy. So the result, the majority of patients showed moderate to marked improvement and there was no difference between behavior therapy and supportive psychotherapy in terms of improvement rates. And another in a study uh, about social anxiety by Alfrom et al. in 1984 uh, found that supportive psychotherapy and prolonged, ex prolonged exposure therapy were equally effective. And another study of social anxiety disorder in 2008 found that supportive psychotherapy and interpersonal therapy produced significant improvement from pre-treatment to post-treatment with neither therapy being superior to the other. Okay. Yes, well, Doc, so nice talaga <laughs> to support the psychotherapy. And then another, and they also did, uh, there are also studies regarding uh, personality disorder. So in a study comparing supportive and interpretive psychotherapy by Piper in 19, 1998, found that there's no outcome differences between the two treatments. And in 2007, in a study by Clarkin, compared transference-focused psychotherapy, dialectical behavior therapy, and supportive psychotherapy in patients with borderline personality disorder and found significant positive change in multiple domains after one year of treatment. So parang level level lang sila. And those with eating disorders, so an evaluation of the efficacy of family-based treatment compared with supportive psychotherapy was undertaken in 2007 for adolescents with bulimia nervosa. So they found that family-based treatment was found to have a clinical 
and statistical advantage over supportive psychotherapy. So, when it comes to eating disorders, so family-based treatment yung mas maganda. And lastly, a study done in, in those with medical disorders. So, Mumford in 1982 reviewed controlled studies of supportive psychotherapy in patients recovering from myocardial infarctions and surgery. So, the authors found that compared with patients receiving only typical medical care, patients receiving psychological intervention had better experiences with pain and increased patient compliance and speed of recovery, as well as fewer complications and fewer days in the hospital. So, this will be my uh, last slide, po, Doc. So, in conclusion, um, the brief review of the efficacy of supportive psychotherapy indicates that supportive treatment appears to be useful, useful across a broad spectrum of psychiatric and medical disorders. However, more research is needed to clarify the indications for supportive psychotherapy and how this treatment should be integrated with other psychotherapy approaches and treatment with medication. So um, that's the end of my report. Uh, thank you everyone for listening. This are yung table 9.1 by the knowledge, skills, and attitudes. Yun rin yung nandun sa evaluation form. Um, ano po, Doc? Uh, may Yan. parang gi, ano po siya, Doc? Gi, tawag ito? Naka, naka summarize na po itong sa evaluation po, Doc, from the ones in the table. Mas madabi po itong sa table po, Doc. Uh, oh. Oo. Mm -hmm. Kasi knowledge, ito po yung table. Sa knowledge, lima lang. Knowledge. Ayan. Integrate po nila si knowledge five. and attitudes po, Doc. Ah, okay. Knowledge yes, and po, attitudes. Tapos skills. Skills. Yes po. I don't know if I should use that. Yes po. Doc. Pero, ang assignment ninyo, balikan mo nga yung 9 point, table 9.1. Ito po, Doc. I think first of all, at this point lang, kasi nasa end naman na tayo halos ng libro, di ba? Yes, pa. Um, ano to? Ano ba nakalagay dito? Okay. Can all of, did, like this week, meron ba kayong patient na natignan, na follow up, na at least three times nyo nang nakita? All of you? Can you hear me? Uh, yes po, Doc. Um, Nag-OPD po or... kayo lahat, no? Yes po, Doc. Nag-OPD po kami, Doc. Um, as to yung same patient na... Sorry, oh, yung same patient na kayo nag-follow up for the, at least three sessions. Uh -oh. Usually po, Doc, nangyayari po siya kapag forensic cases namin po, Doc, kasi nakadek talaga siya sa amin. However, with the regular patients po, Doc, uh, I think I speak for everyone na walang masyadong ganyan po, Doc, na sunod-sunod sa amin talaga. Kasi parang ano lang talaga doc eh random lang na anong mauna na chart kinukuha namin. Hindi na po sinusunod 'yun. Na yung continuity of treatment na kung ikaw ang nagtingin as new patient, ikaw magfa-follow up. I think sa child sinusunod po siya doc. However sa adult um uh, wala pong ganun unless po doc Yung okay. una nakakita. Um, <laughs> so, pa paano nyo inaano yung continuity of treatment with a patient? A particular patient? Ano ba? Hindi na ginagawa yun? Bakit nawala yun?
Hi, Doc. I think uh, nung time kasi, Doc, na kulang yung residence na po, Doc. So, hindi siya na parang napagpatuloy po, Doc. As a matter of policy? Hindi po, Doc. Kasi, for example, konti lang residence nung time na yun po, Doc. So, for example, ang inuuna na, Doc, para matapos lahat po, Doc. Oh, pero ngayon, pwede na, di ba? Ilan ba kayo? We will inquire regarding this now po, Doc. Uh, Kasi, hello, Dr. How, Dr. How, do you, oh, oh, how do you, so how do you assess yourselves? Or how do you see through a patient? Kung ikaw yung nag-intake, tapos paano mo nalalaman kung tama ba yung diagnosis mo? the first session at saka kung umepekto ba yung binigay mo nung previous yung yung upon intake kasi pag follow up hindi na ikaw or chamba lang kung ikaw ganun ba yon ganun yung nangyayari ngayon usually po doc kung for example the patient is uh very symptom very symptomatic po doc uh, gida indicate po namin na kami talaga ang tumitingin po doc pero if stable na po yung patient for example several consults na parang uh, nangyari is kaya sino resident na po doc so in the end wala ding therapeutic alliance na established with the patient Kumbaga, the patient will not be able to say my doctor is Dr. Lasida or Dr. Santos. Tama ba? Kilala ba kayo na? Kilala yes, ba kayo na mga pasyente? Yes po, Dok. Kano namang patients po, Dok, na kami talaga ang kumitingin talaga, Dok. Pero, pero, how, not, pero how does that happen? Merong may, mga patients na gina-care of po, Dok, na sa amin talaga, Dok. I mean, paano yung proseso na, na okay, itong patient na to sa iyo, ikaw magpa-follow through? How does that happen? Um, usually, though, we uh, instruct, uh, we place in the um, kanang appointment slip na care of sila sa amo adok so that when they um, set an appointment with the social service, ma under sila sa amo ang care doc. So, pag abut nila sa OPD doc, gina butangan na siya o um, marag uh, care of. Uh, particular doctor so ang katong nga doctor ang nagatan aw sa iya ha um mauna siya doc um how many percent of patients are like that pero kumbaga ikaw lang mamili na ato gusto ko tong patient na to so ilalagay ko care of me ganon Ganun ba ang proseso ngayon? What's happening in the OPD? How does that happen? There's no... It's randomly done. Is that what I'm picking up? Um, ano po, Doc? Naka-number yung patients po natin, Doc, is naka-priority number po sila, Doc. So, um, we get charts po, Doc. Uh, depende po dun sa, ano po, Doc, sa number, sa prioritization po nila, Doc, kung sinong nauna. Yun yung makukuha ng resident po. How are they prioritized? 
kung sino pong nauna na magpatriage po, Dok. Parang first come, first serve basis po siya, Dok. Hindi, yeah, I get that. Pero yung ang concern ko is how is it assigned to you as parang ikaw yung magpa-follow through Kasi nga, what I'm trying to find out is how do you follow through? Or how do you establish therapeutic alliance? And how do you assess whether you did right, whether the patient is, is if, whether your diagnosis is correct, whether your, your management is helping the patient, your initial management is helping the patient and whether you need to change meds and what are the issues you're supposed to be following up on each patient. This, that's what you're supposed to be doing in supportive psychotherapy. Well, more so in expressive psychotherapy. Pero kung pa iba iba, or randomly lang pinipili kung sino yung nasa yung magpipili parang magulo yata as far as I'm concerned <coughs> parang do you feel that's an effective way of you to learn psychotherapy even if it's just like supportive psychotherapy we will suggest lang din po na. Sa... Pero randomly, okay, like ikaw, Desiree, how many patients right now, more or less, are you following up na ikaw yung nag, nag, ikaw yung hinahanap or ikaw yung kakilalang doktor or ikaw talaga yung nag, naka-assign sa'yo? Um, right now po, Doc, meron po ako uh, dalawang pasyente na pinapabalik ko po na care of sa akin po talaga. Hindi na sinusulatan ko na care of. Um, ano po, uh, yung case po kasi is um, uh, MBD and nag, uh, ginafollow ko po yung ano po, yung course niya po and then symptom monitoring din po and then um, uh, nag ano din po ako, nag try po din ako mag uh, apply practice ng psychotherapy po sa, ka sa kanila po. Pero dalawa lang po si Dok. Paano mo napili yung dalawang yon? Ano lang po, Dok? Ako po yung kasing naka-intake interview po, Dok. And then, so yun na po siya. <laughs> Ako yung naka-intake interview and then I got na uh, depression na parang borderline. So yun na po, Dok. Parang hindi follow through ko na lang po siya. Oh. How about you, Peter? How many are you following through? Hi, Doc. Uh, actually, Doc, sa ch child rotator po kasi ako, Doc. So, I think most of us din naman po, Doc, is mar marami kami din na follow up na child din po, Doc. So, currently ngayon, Doc, is mga dalawa or tatlo sa child po. Pero sa adult? Kasi close monitoring, Doc. Sa adult? Sa Sa adult po, Doc, is... Uh, Kasi bale, magta-third year ka na, di ba? Yes po, Doc. Meron ka bang patient na nakita from first year na pinafollow through mo hanggang ngayon? Yes, Doc. Yung, yung mga... Yung sa mga nakikita ko during na present ko din, Doc, na mga patient... So, yung mga CP? Yung CP, din na make sure ko talaga, Doc, na ako na ang tumitingin sa kanina doon. So, how many patients depression. would that be? Mga four po doon. Ang liit, no? Ikaw, Dave. Ah, after nun, doon. Uh, ako doon, I think, uh, right now, siguro doon, I have uh, six or seven po doon. Na nakita mo from it intake? Mm, yes, po, Doc. Uh, if you're also asking, Doc, from first year, 
till now, Doc. Meron din po ako, Doc, pero wala po na nag-follow up technically. Yun lang po. So how about the rest? I'm just curious how this is happening. How about the rest? Like Camille? For me, the same with Peter, Doc, na yung mga pieces from CP, but um, usually yung mga nakikita ko now sa virtual, Doc, um, usually, ako na talaga yung sa ako na ako gina deck doc for follow up. So, mga around 4 to 5 na virtual form stores doc na sa akin na ta-assign yun. Um, with OPB na face-to-face -face, doc, so far yung mga naka-assign na, na um, advice to follow up with me doc majority have not uh, followed up. So, medyo gamay lang po sa OPD na face-to-face -to, -face to um, um naka, na ako bid ang naga uh, follow. Mm -hmm. Ikaw, Dweba. Sino po ba nang dyan? Good afternoon po, Doc. Um, for me po, Doc, pag, ano, um, pag ako ang nakapag from intake interview, Doc, I usually follow up na uh, care of sa ako, uh, Doc, until more stable ang patient na kanang na, 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 okay na siya to follow up like three to four months. So, um, maano na siya, Doc, maano na siya sa pool sa, sa, sa OPD. Pero pag, ano, pag acute pa, Doc, uh, usually gina-care of na ako sa ako, ah, uh, Ang um, patients po, Doc, na since first year na ako ang naka-care of talaga, Doc. Mga dira sa 5 to 6 po, Doc, na ano, na follow through na po. Pero at some, uh, at, at some point po, Doc, basta ako ang maka-intake interview. So mga around 8 or 9 po, Doc, mga teleconsults and face-to-face. -face, ako na mag-follow up, Doc, for the first mga, ano, Doc, mga 3 to 4 months po. Okay. Pero oh, judging from this, I know this table. If you were to rate yourselves, or well, maybe let's do this. Why don't you, based on those patients that you're following through, can you rate all of you rate yourselves? And submit to me by then before the next didactic session. Use that same Likert scale in the ano in the assessment for uh, in the evaluation form. This one for the yes one for yeah. Bale, it's zero. Yes. On sa tung not not noted ba? Can't say po doc yung zero. Ah, uh, yun. Then can't say. Five po yung expert. Tapos, ano nga tong two? Approaching two. competence po doc. Tapos, three. Competence and three. Tapos, competence plus yung four. And then five is expert. Okay. But let's use the one that's more, more detailed. Just for you to be able to self-assess kung where you are as far as supportive psychotherapy is concerned. Ah, yes, but no. After all the didactics and considering that you've had a few patients that you followed through from intake. So, kumbaga dun sa patients na yon, would you be able to say, uh, how would you assess yourself on each of this knowledge, skills, and attitude. Yes, po, Doc. I will post so, this one, po, Doc, para oh, ma-ano oh. namin, po, Doc. Oh, I post mo, tapos... Pero ang gagamitin mo yung table 9, ha, na knowledge, skills, and attitudes, kasi dito naka... sa 
evolve form na ka merge yung knowledge and attitudes eh. Yes. Para lang mas alam nyo kung ano yung dapat binabantayan nyo sa sarili nyo. <coughs> but I would also like to see what your self-assessment is. Kasi as I will not be able to assess you because I don't see you and maybe what we should do next is have a v each of you have a video. Eh? That, that's really the best way to learn it uh, with a supervisor. And I um videoed intake, interview, and follow-through sessions. Yes, but now. Kasi we see how many? We see about 40, ba? 40 to 50 patients a day. That is 70. Eh. Sa OPD. Tama ba? No? Ganun pa rin ba census natin ngayon sa OPD? Yes po, Doc. 70 or sometimes more po, Doc. Which means a big chunk, a very large chunk of our patients are not getting psychotherapy, supported psychotherapy. If if one, for one, there's no therapeutic alliance or therapeutic relationship being established at all. Maybe we should rethink that. Kasi dati, mayroon talagang... Anyway, I'll bring it up with the consultants. Sino nga ang OPD ngayon? Si Agnes ba? Dr. Padilla po, Doc. Yes po. Ah, sige. I'll bring it up with her. Kasi kung sa child na fa-follow through nyo, bakit hindi nagagawa sa adult? Tsaka hindi nyo, nakalimutan ko na rin. Pero hindi, ay hindi ko talaga nakalimutan. Pero well, we missed what, two sessions, I think, no? So maybe it might be good for you to present that first, next session. And then let's discuss your assessment. So lagyan nyo na lang ng score key dito sa side nito. Huh? Para madali lang. Yes, pa daw. Pwede mo, gawang, pwede mo bang gawa ng form, desire, same one. Lagyan mo lang ng Likert scale 1 to 0 to 5 ba yun? Yes, pa daw. Yes, pa daw. Para pa, mas madali yes. nating score. Huh? Apa, apa. This, well, do you think this is going to be helpful for you guys? In the context of this discussion? Yes, pa daw. Kasi ito talaga yung competencies na ano eh. Ito dapat talaga yung competencies na ina-assess eh. Okay, so let's end there and let's, what's our next?